Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so welcome to the second part of tonight's public program, Summer School School uh, 2021. Uh, I'm happy that we have with us uh, the initiators and the team curating this year's edition of Autostrada uh, Biennale. Uh, we have with us Vadra Brashi, Lutlin Fischikji, Jona Vatsa, and Ovaldur Moshol. I'll just read briefly something from the description uh, that you can find also on their website. Uh, uh, and then I will leave the floor to, to the team. So Autostrada Biennale was established by two artists and a pedagogue in 2014. Uh, as the only contemporary institution in prison, uh, it functions on two spreads. One is a physical exhibition space in public space every two years. The second is a long-term educational center in the former K4 camp. Uh, K4 stands for Kosovo Forces and NATO uh, Forces in Kosovo, where the exhibition preparation process is open to the public, making creation of the artworks and critical thinking. Uh, a bit about uh, just one sentence from to, uh, this year's edition of, uh, of Autostrada Biennale. So, What If a Journey, this is uh, the title, is an exhibition about the unfinished. It can be a road, an electrification map, a house, a flower field, a story, a relationship, or a country. It is an exhibition that takes incompleteness as an invitation to respond, to relate, and to grow. Uh, so, once again, happy to have you with us uh, via video link. Uh, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Albert. Uh, 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 you again. Uh, so we decided uh, it would be it would be short uh, organizational introduction first by Watra, and then I'm going to continue more on the uh, conception uh, and the methodologies uh, of the exhibition. I hope uh, you have already seen our two uh, city projects in Pristina uh, by Petit Halilay and Alvaro Urbano and Agnes Dennis. Uh, and um, from then on, I'll speak all the keywords, uh, concept, artist selection methodologies and um, then open to your questions but first uh, on the organizational <laughs> side i give the mic back to Batra. <laughs> thank you very much um uh, albert and station it's a pleasure uh, to be part of uh, your program uh autostrada biennale started in prison kosovo in 2014 with its first edition opening in 2017, it was built on the need for more cultural exchange in the region and with the world. We always imagine it uh, as a connecting point, a route on the map of the Western Balkans. And the pandemic demand us that we rethink the Biennale model, model. And as a result, we have enthusiastically extended our, uh, our activities into also two other cities uh, in Pristina and in Prizren. In this way, we continue the work uh, of our funding idea, local yet very connected. Our main goal is to bring art into the lives of people, into habits, living and working patterns, to create environments for the imagination and evocation. This way we engage in the public spaces in previous edition, also in this edition, we use public spaces, a bus station, um, the uh, riverbed, traditional houses and uh, uh, gardens. We want to foster moments of artistic and everyday exchange. And our main goal is to bring art to people uh, and not people to art. So we spread all over the city. Um, and uh, as the only contemporary art institution in prison and Autostrada Biennale functions, as you mentioned, in two speeds. Uh, one is physical exhibition um, that take place every two years. The other is our new education and production space in the former K4 military base, the space that now we are also here. Um, here in this space, we produce all of our artworks on of the third edition. And later, we hope to extend the publicness of our platform by considering art production as form of learning through education, on-site training, and the open uh, and, and an open exhibition. 
making a production space, uh, our aim is to develop new models of cultural creation that will encourage a young generation to think critically about art and becoming part of the process. Um, together with uh, our invited artists, we encourage critical thinking debate. Uh, so we have also the public program, which is very important for us uh, during the Autostrada Biennale. Uh, we, uh, we have a um, public program, so uh, we could not be more happy to be on this journey to get together with our creators, uh, with Durmushoglu and Joanna Varsha, who have engaged uh, in extending conversation with local and international artists. So maybe now uh, I can give my uh, turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, my first question uh, is, can we can we get the co-host so that we can show some videos and images? You can share your screen, yes. You can share our screen, great. Because uh, we think that's also um, that's also the best way possible. Come and share screen. We do first. We need to the system preference. All right. Okay. Oh, we need to quit and reopen because of the share screen. Sorry. We need to do this. Yeah, we need to do this to be able to show. We'll leave and come back for. Should we run away? Yeah, we'll run away. Does anyone see the words that I'm using now? Yes. All right. Great. Um, do they see? No. Yeah, they are seeing now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Video of image. Okay. Image. Where? Where is the image? Uh, better. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, is it? Are we a kind of? Um, are you able to see the, our screen share now? Yes, yes, we see. Great. Um, I think it's an uh, it's an important um, uh, beginning uh, image, and uh, not only because of its being in Pristina, but also because of. Uh, uh, because of its um, that it works also as a kind of a blueprint model for uh, for us how uh, we uh, we designed our collaboration with Joanna and also how we understood collaboration in the space of the biennial uh, and in terms uh, of uh, community uh, connections. Uh, and uh, rebuilding uh, agencies uh, through the space of the, the artwork. Um, so hello, um, thank you all for sharing uh, your evening with us. I'm very happy to uh, be here as uh, speaking as part of um, the collaborative voice uh, we developed with uh, Joanna Varsha uh, as uh, neighbors uh, in Berlin. It has been a journey for us that started uh, with our collaboration, the, the project, the neighborhood project, uh, uh, and a an, uh, public space initiative uh, called the Balcone, some of you uh, may have heard about. Uh, and the journey for us that started with uh, the Balcone extended uh, to Kosovo thanks to the invitation that came uh, from the Autostrada team. Uh, in 
uh, our practices uh, with Joanna, one of the most important concerns that uh, we, uh, we both share is the necessity uh, to shift uh, practices and our methodologies in the way we produce and share uh, art uh, and to create an integral down to earth, uh, strong and resilient uh, position uh, in the curatorial field in the, um, with the works that uh, we, uh, we want to highlight and we want the, with the positions that we want uh, do, to strengthen. Uh, through our artist uh, collaborators. So the Balcone already has been a very strong exercise in that that started with uh, almost, that started with a zero budget and that continued into a, a larger uh, network thanks to some uh, public support uh, and also interest uh, of the city and of our colleagues and of our the neighbors uh, also in the first place where uh, we managed to uh, create, I wouldn't say create, but remember the community. We are in the large city of Berlin uh, where so many artists live, but uh, rarely they're able to share their work with each other or rarely they come together uh, as a community. And this all happened uh, through the windows and balconies uh, of the artist houses and studios uh, in Prenzlauerbeck. Uh, as I said, we have, we have been very excited uh, when we first received like, the invite uh, uh, in Kosovo. And we were also very much uh, aware of our responsibility in contributing this uh, very, very dynamic, uh, very young, but at the same time, very, very fragile uh, art scene. Uh, and how we can uh, develop uh, a unique uh, voice, a unique tone of collaboration uh, as curators coming from outside as guests, uh, but also getting in close connection with the uh, with the hosts uh, and uh, create another uh, sort of uh, reciprocal uh, conversation that speaks honestly about the needs uh, and how those needs uh, can strengthen each other uh, and can respond uh, to each other. Uh, may it be in the context of the organization or may it be in the uh, in the context of like the community uh, relations and uh, and structuring and may it be also uh, may it be uh, also in the form of uh, developing another model of collaboration between uh, the local uh, agencies and the researches that are vital for the local context yet coming from outside. Um, uh, and, uh, and I think at this stage, you know, developing um, such a young biennial uh, for us, is, we see as not another, uh, another check, you know, in a list of that kind of the curatorial networking to do this biennial and then after that biennial, but we really see our role here from the very beginning uh, as, uh, as infrastructural. Like, so we have been not only interested in creating our curatorial concept, but our curatorial concept also comes from the close connection uh, with our team, uh, with our core team, with uh, Vatra, uh, Leotrim and Barish. Uh, and uh, according, you know, to the needs uh, of the organization uh, and how we can uh, structure a biennial and exhibition as a physical extension of this uh, infrastructural crucial conversation. Um, and, um, and then of course, you know, we would like to remember 
the biennial format as a format of resistance and resilience. Uh, because, of course, at the moment, as very much discussed over and over again, uh, if the biennials are needed, if they are dead or not, uh, if they can really function. Uh, our answer uh, with Joanna is it really depends on how you understand and you uh, formalize the agency of an exhibition like that. Uh, it really very much then depends what becomes of the biennial. And that's what we wanted to see, uh, wanted to exercise uh, in Kosovo, but mainly, of course, starting in prison and extending uh, our voice uh, to Pristina uh, and Peya. Um, so we have, uh, I'm sure you may have uh, seen some of our documentations and some of our uh, uh, some of our interviews or some of our texts already, but it would be important uh, to maybe highlight again that what if a journey uh, has a number of, let's say, uh, keywords, uh, which is infrastructure, intimacy, of course, the journey itself, uh, incompleteness, and agency, reciprocity, uh, and uh, being a host and being a guest, um, and uh, and also, um, if I may have not, if I forgotten it, intimacy. Um, and uh, all of all of these important uh, concerns, like all of these keywords, actually also came to us. Uh, in our very first conversation when we first arrived to Kosovo uh, with uh, the artists and activists uh, we had we had met in Prizren. So we decided actually to uh, form our exhibition uh, around the, the stories that they shared with us, around the concerns that they shared with us uh, uh, and, uh, and to really use our curatorial agency in order to respond properly uh, to them, in order to build a deep dialogue uh, that extends only uh, the, you know, the format or like kind of the limit uh, of an, an exhibition-based conversation uh, per se. Um, and uh, from these conversations uh, actually came out bridging or negotiating uh, between the local agencies, their, their expertise, their, their position, and uh, the research models uh, that they would be interested in or the research models also that would really learn from them, you know, from what they uh, had achieved, from what they had done. Uh, so, uh, uh, so it's always uh, with all of the works, most of the works, that you really see in the biennial actually has a background of this collaborative uh, conversation uh, behind them. Uh, and uh, and uh, thanks to the, some of the documentations we made, we also, we are opening uh, uh, some of these collaborative uh, resonances uh, up. Uh, and coming uh, to the, the work, uh, of Petrit and Alvaro, uh, Forget Me Not, that opened in the, uh, on th uh, 29th of June uh, as part of the fifth Kosovo, fifth Pristina Pride Week. Um, it uh, has come very much from also from Petrit's uh, desire uh, to uh, to make such a such a gesture uh, with his work in order to raise the relevance and strength of the ongoing public campaign that's led by LGBT, uh, LGBTQI plus uh, groups uh, in Kosovo uh, to create a civic code that would match their needs, uh, but that is also in accordance with the constitution already. 
uh, and uh, the work uh, forget me not that is now the let's say the site specific work uh, that comes now in the national library uh, started it, its own journey um, in Spain uh, in a context actually uh, that doesn't recognize Kosovo for its own colonial and power sovereignty concerns uh, and uh, a really like a major exhibition that happened in Madrid uh, in one of the largest uh, I mean in the largest museum basically of uh, of Spain and uh, an exhibition that couldn't be seen also most of the Kosovo uh, community they wouldn't be allowed to uh, and an exhibition actually that um, that speaks of a of a deep of a relationship of an intimate relationship uh, that developed out of exclusions, uh, and uh, and Patriot really wanted uh, to have this uh, work only with the condition to be able to you know make it useful for the community uh, for the community that he's part of. Uh, for the fight, for the struggle that they are uh, they are pushing for a long time, uh, and again also of course uh, for his own uh, family and for his own friends and, and circle. Uh, therefore, uh, we joined powers uh, maybe for the first time uh, uh, in a very unlikely like combination that happens between Kosovo Biennial uh, that happens between. Um, uh, uh, Autostrada, of course, like as the lead, as the leading force of this conversation, uh, that uh, that took the organizations, uh, many organizations behind the uh, the annual uh, Pride Week, uh, and um, the and the National Library, uh, and also uh, Manifesta, as well, uh, and all these organizations uh, met and worked also for the first time uh, under these circumstances. So this work uh, of Petrits brought these voices together. So it was really an act of bridging uh, and it was an act of um, bringing together uh, and using uh, the form of the flowers uh, as the growth, as life, as love, as intimacy, uh, as energy, as desire. Uh, and um, uh, so therefore uh, we find it very, very important as curators that a beauty as such also has another political agency, thanks, you know, the thanks to the uh, old network that actually developed and uh, made this uh, exhibition possible uh, in Kosovo. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, also it is, the largest uh, site-specific installation that uh, is realized uh, in the country. And then also with the National Library that never hosted uh, such a gesture, uh, such a big gesture in terms of contemporary art uh, before. Um, uh, and uh, the... Uh, the other uh, important statement that we developed as city project in, in Pristina, uh, as you may have seen, is uh, Agnes Dennis's sunflower uh, fields that she particularly proposed uh, for her participation in Autostrada Biennale when we first approached her, uh, actually with the hope of realizing uh, the wheat field, the confrontation. Uh, and uh, Agnes Dennis is uh, maybe one of the first artists who used, who avoided the term land art and who used the term uh, environmental uh, art. And her work uh, has always been uh, coming from like the power and fertility of the soil itself, rather than the human that is shaping the soil. It's instead like looking at what comes out of uh, that soil. Uh, and uh, uh, and realizes space of confrontation, but also cohabitation uh, at the same time. Uh, so we really also see this work as a very strong uh, conversation uh, with Petrit and, and Alvaro's uh, uh, work. 
uh, but also um, also a strong um, expression uh, of a desire of another sort of relation, you know, with the site and with the context uh, and uh, with the concerns uh, of the, the urban space uh, in Pristina and with the life that has become even much more fragile uh, in the space of the pandemic and how uh, can we really contribute to life and how we can use our all powers as artists and curators to contribute to that discussion again in an integral uh, manner. Um, are there any questions uh, so far? Uh, then I would love to continue to our statements in uh, Prizran. Uh, please continue. Yeah, okay, great. Um, then, um, then, uh, then I will talk a little bit also of our methodologies and also that is very particular to the core exhibition uh, in prison and also the postscript we developed in PAYA. I will also like uh, speak about. Uh, and um, in the meantime, there will be also some of the videos that we'd like to share because we, we want to really also for you to hear the voice of the, the artists and their research. Uh, and the positions uh, that they are taking for also like understanding uh, uh, our uh, attempt uh, uh, in uh, prison, especially. Um, uh, so we tried uh, in the city for the, I would say like, uh, the, of course it is the third edition, uh, it is like a kind of a learning process for the team. This has been such an excitement for us because we really, again, I would repeat, because we really see it as a possibility of, uh, of taking risk and trying new things and trying the things that, uh, let's say more established context wouldn't allow us to, the things that we really feel close to our heart, that we really take seriously and that we can really see, you know, we can experiment with and we can see, uh, how much communication we can develop with our publics, you know, through our uh, through our concerns uh, and desires uh, in this way. Uh, so in uh, in Prizren, uh, before the exhibitions were more, of course, as Vatra was saying, that uh, they always used public spaces. Always had been a very important position and concern uh, for the biennial team. But it was always happening in the in more in the uh, form of like little group exhibitions, you know, in locations. Uh, so what we did, also challenging each other with our team, I would say, like so we were like raising debate all the time, like kind of for each other. Uh, it's to uh, develop site-specific projects for every location that. Uh, that we are enacting uh, to really create a situated uh, situated source of knowledge uh, for the city uh, and to also like uh, uh, for our visitors also to to see the other sides of the city that they uh, live in but they may have never uh, experienced um, uh, so therefore, like every piece, every artwork, if you can come to prison that uh, I hope you will be able to also experience in person has uh, a specific routing uh, to the sites that they are, uh, they are taking, uh, taking place. Uh, which I would say like, for example, in the Hydro Electrana, uh, central, the water central that were that was developed by Austrian architects in the early 1900s, and that became a heritage museum. And uh, afterwards, uh, uh, hosted the works by Boro Babocci uh, about water and flow and river uh, and all the like. Also, work that happened in the in this Hydroelectrana Central. And uh, the work of Agnieszka Polska, a uh, very new work that we are very lucky to show also uh, very freshly uh, just after its 
opening uh, in Museum of Modern Art uh, in Warsaw uh, about the electrification uh, of Poland uh, and how that electrification was also like a struggle that is very much inspired uh, and uh, empowered by the partisan uh, resistance uh, in Poland. Uh, uh, that these two works in conversation, you know, with the, with the history uh, of Hydroelectrana and with also all the objects inside the Hydroelectrana that we also wanted to show and keep like the electrification map of Kosovo uh, from 70s, uh, we want to, to to really like, uh, we want to, to enable uh, a, a, a reciprocal conversation between the, the space and the work uh, and the situated position uh, that we are trying to take uh, also curatorially. Uh, this is, you know, one is the collaboration aspect that I have discussed, you know, with Petri's work. And the second is also this situated site practice that we really find very crucial, is one of the hearts of our um, exhibition. Uh, and uh, another strategy is, of course, for us to be able to communicate with our public who is learning, let's say, as, they are, as part of their everyday experience, uh, contemporary art. Uh, to really realize projects uh, that uh, that they can connect with, that they can see, uh, and uh, that they get curious about, uh, and that really also leaves a trace in the city in a very particular way, which can be exemplified by uh, Hera Büyüktaşçıyan's work inspired by the disappeared water channels, potoks uh, in Prizren that really was speaking about the spirit of prison also uh, as a very particular town, uh, the potoks that really defined uh, borders of mahalles and houses that everybody respected and uh, that not even dropping garbage or spitting or anything that was about the common use uh, and common, that was a sign of common use and common respect also in the city. Uh, and that got destroyed also in the 60s with the, with the large flood uh, of Lombardy uh, and uh, that then had a much more tamed conversation uh, with the city. Uh, Hera decided uh, to uh, use actually uh, a, a, very, a very common housing uh, material that is uh, especially used in uh, in temporary structures uh, for uh, saving heat uh, in uh, in summer and in winter, uh, and to draw uh, a water line, imagining that water actually coming from the cracks of the mountain and coming down uh, in the city, joining the existing uh, water channels. Uh, and this is also another. Um, uh, this is also another um, uh, important part for the exhibition, and uh, uh, for that, as you see, like with these two uh, location, two sites, and like kind of work examples, um, uh, we are already talking about also the river. That is a kind of the main core of the city. Of course, prison is a city that also started by the side of the uh, Lombardy, uh, that started with a church that's now called the Friday Mosque. Uh, and, uh, uh, and it kind of was the first sign of civilization also that, that continued in the city. And actually, Hera's work uh, referred to, uh, to the frescoes that got uh, painted over uh, forever uh, in this mosque uh, church uh, and uh, uh, from actually like a uh, like arabic written script uh, of the time that the, their beauty is uh, forever inscribed they are gone but their beauty is forever inscribed in the eye of the person who closed them who painted over them 
uh, referring back to the water channels. So uh, here maybe it would be uh, it would be really nice to show the the like a small video uh, that we made. They are still in production, by the way. So you will see that we won't have the full subtitles, but at least it will give you uh, an idea uh, also of like the research uh, of the research process. Um, uh, and also the installation process uh, in the city. The main component was the absence of water that kind of enabled this whole narrative to start. Because through this work, I started to understand the, uh, the role of water as a kind of medium that grows the city or the land and it's kind of, uh, it helps you to retrace history and social structure also. And the absence of it kind of enables you to kind of, you know, uh, retrace it through certain clues that are left within the city. And in the case of uh, Prizren, we just started to follow these absent water springs that used to kind of um, fulfill the city's life and also uh, its, uh, its fluidity of its social life as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm, and water is, is an element that um, not I don't always use it physically, but also fluidity is something that is related with the mind, you know, because um, the mind is it is also like it has its tidal movements when there is low tide, things forgotten comes uh, up and we remember them and then if it's the other way around we forget them completely. And so here there is an aspect of invisibility as well, and this invisibility is something enables you to search for um, mental rivers or mental waters and you know you kind of follow that so i think over here the piece that starts from the castle and it draws the city let's say so i started to see the water as an element that just defines things that are no more there so and the name of the work also is related maybe with you that. should also tell about the juma church maybe. yeah the yeah. the juma jami actually is uh, used to be a, a, a church and and um once it was it was uh, converted to a mosque uh, its frescoes would be would be covered, and the guy who was covering it actually wrote an inscription in Arabic, saying that my eyes pupil is your nest, which means uh, the the nest of your beauty, which means you will never be seen again, but you will be imprinted in my mind. So uh, I think the way how we were following the invisible water path or invisible elements uh, of this architectural memory, let's say. Uh, was resonating with that, so uh, with the idea of the image, you yeah. know, uh, an image is a memory and, you know, it's all connected. So through the people that we all spoke over here during the research period, it was nothing was written, but rather it was written in the mind of people. Exactly. exactly. So that really helped the oral testimonies as well. So yes. I think it's an act of drawing rather than, an, you know, and a gesture, I would say, uh, more than because there is the river and the whole city's own flow. Mm. So. Um, so maybe yeah. uh, maybe can I say uh, maybe it would be nice like to uh, have Malgorzata and uh, Flaka afterwards, uh, but let me don't yeah, I would just that like, kind of yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I like to take the questions if they are in, in the room. Sure, sure. I mean we have my, a lot of materials to share. We can also. Uh, watch another process video we developed we, or we are in the course of developing to see also another uh, uh, another uh, work by Margoreta Mirga Tash uh, coming from a very important activist Romani family and exercising her activism through uh, through artworks developed with uh, the Romani communities who also developed a really beautiful uh, a very strong statement on uh, the Romani women's stories. Uh, so maybe we can also see this uh, work uh, that is installed also in the city. Another also, uh, I would say, interface of communication with the city for us um, as a statement. And then I think we can take, it's very short. It's also another two minutes video. So then we can take questions also afterwards. Mesam kadayan de prison, autostrada binale. 
qui a fait le portrait de Romniengre. Chauf Romnia, il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Il y avait un peu de cœur, car comme avant, c'était si cavalier. Production, education, and exhibition spaces that you see behind us, uh, and uh, all the materials are also still still here. They are permanent. Uh, they are also part of the the whole educational program. Uh, Autostrada Biennale is developing for the young communities uh, to also gain other talents to exercise things that they are learning in the universities and to really also enjoy. Uh, contributing to the production of a work of art. As we always strive for diversity and, and, and also portraying the diversity of uh, Romani culture, in these portraits, we started from those who have left the traces in Romani culture, meaning Esma Rajapova, the very important singer of Romani music. And then we also had some international uh, activists, women activists, like Nicoleta Bitu from uh, Romania, and also have we have Dalin Laba from UK, an artist as well. And then from international, we came to, to the national level. We have Shpresa Agushi, who has also uh, left her traces in feminism, activism, and also involving uh, women into social life. And other than that, we also have uh, Romani women, who is representing the Romani clothing, Zinat Dalush. So, so she's actually portraying the traditional clothing. And we also have an anonymous Romani women who is also introducing the clothing and the lifestyle of Romani women in Kosovo. And you see a little bit of the madness of the installation. <laughs> da je ovo mare materijenca, na cinav nebe. Koda so den mangeo manuše, koda so den mangeo Roma, so den mangeo, so cinav vam de kaj se second handi. In igen te da umande vašno, kaj te si vel povestar, kaj te je vel, kaj si energija, kaj te kova manuše so mange den te mire portreti, te si vel teskri materijali. Community involvement is one of the key aspects that we wanted to have in Autostrada Biennale. So other than we involved community in gathering the clothing, clothes and uh, fabrics, we also involved the community in sewing all those portraits because we wanted to give them the community some skills that they will always get and remember from the Autostrada Biennale. So other than the fact that they will have those portraits, they will always uh, foreshadow their traces through clothes. We also wanted to give something to the community, which is more feasible and, and stronger, which is some uh, skills given by our uh, uh, host artist, uh, Magosha, to the community women in uh, teaching them some skills of sewing and uh, also portraying future portraits of the Romani women. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Ah, stop share. Yeah, we do stop share. Or maybe we just like kind of put one videos that that goes in the background while we're talking. Yeah. Just like no other videos. I have a question if I may. Yes, I'm just going to put it to silence so the video will flow also in the background uh, and we can converse. I have a question about your research as curators. Uh, yeah. how, how extensive was it? How, uh, with what uh, ideas and, and uh, uh, ideologies it was led, basically, or uh, uh, developed further, how inclusive it was, uh, was it gender sensitive, was it ish related to issues or topics or the criticality of it, and, and also the relation, uh, because you mentioned resilience and uh, resistance, also two big uh, 
uh, notions, uh, but in our context, unfortunately, they are never associated with temporal events. So they're usually associated with a struggle to maintain, uh, let's say, uh, a presence which is, uh, let's say, uh, not reduced to uh, a festival or a, a short-term event, right? Because the said notion of festivalization of culture has been pretty much uh, an ongoing uh, reality in cultural policies in Kosovo. And uh, more and more, uh, uh, there are growing discussions what this brings and what it takes from the art scene. Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, thank you for raising that. Um, of course, we, I'm very aware when I mention uh, the term resistance and resilience, uh, what it um, also means uh, in the context that uh, we, are, uh, we are working at. Uh, our research process uh, in the city, starting from the first part of the question, uh, our research process in the cities, I would say, in Kosovo in general, of course, has been uh, shaped uh, by the pandemic. Uh, a lot of studio visits, uh, we were able to work very extensively when we were finding the time gaps, uh, when the roads were open, when the flights were possible, um, and uh, all of the other works actually like had to continue and had to uh, be realized online with, uh, with extensive uh, conversations. Uh, and um, as, uh, as I had also shared from the beginning, uh, it's of course rightfully the mention, the mention of the festivalization of culture is a, uh, is a right point, a critical point. Uh, to be highlighted, uh, but uh, from, from our side, as I said, from the very beginning uh, of our involvement, we decided this involvement as an infrastructural involvement, as a long-term involvement, uh, and uh, uh, a long-term involvement, and also that would, uh, uh, that would create self-criticism for the formats and structures that we are using in contemporary art and to give them another sort of agency uh, possible and how it is possible in also such a sensitive context uh, like Kosovo. Um, and uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can say that uh, the exhibition uh, in, in Prizren, Pristina and Ed Peya uh, is also uh, our self-reflection as uh, curators and collaborators of the times, you know, of the concerns, of the discussions that we are realizing in the world, uh, but from the lens uh, and from the lens and from like the particular concerns uh, of the context that we are uh, working. And uh, because we know how uh, um, how the borders, how being bordered and left out, how uh, like how the exclusion that is happening in the in the whole European process of uh, Kosovo is something also very sensitive uh, to a lot of uh, to a lot of its citizens. Uh, that's why we also wanted to highlight uh, when we are introducing. Uh, international, let's say, researchers that are coming outside to really show actually how uh, a lot of the concerns also resonate with the questions of the world and contribute also with the models that they're developing to the questions in the world from the particular Kosovo perspective. So this was something that was very important for us to really like kind of work on and uh, to also make ourselves more agile. Uh, and um, and then of course um, uh, uh, both of us you may have realized also from our uh, from our artist list yes we are very uh, fond of uh, working with uh, working with women uh, so you really see a very strong presence uh, of the uh, of the women and. Uh, Queer, 
uh, artists uh, in our uh, in our list. Uh, so this is of course like something that really wanted uh, to propose across generations. It's also very present, let's say, uh, from the work of a young artist like Hera Tashian to to the work to the invisible work of the uh, uh, artist uh, Valbona Jarka who is the only um, uh, who is the only female artist actually to have the whole prison league uh, collection uh, here uh, in the city uh, which we restored and which we also made part uh, of our uh, exhibition so we really uh, we have been uh, very much that kind of thinking of, you know, uh, what we are, what we can bring as like the guests that are coming from outside, but whose role uh, that we both see as uh, more infrastructural and, and permanent and how we can really mediate uh, for certain critical discussions uh, in the in the country and to really like also deborder uh, through uh, the conversations and commissions uh, that uh, we made. Thank you, thank you so much. Anyone else for I just have one last question for Walter, if I may. Uh, so first, to congratulate you for the beautiful uh, production space that you got. Uh, and uh, which is, uh, I guess, very important for also self-producing the, the biennial in a way. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, what's, uh, what are the plans for the next edition? Are you already doing research for the next uh, uh, curator, curator that will uh, produce, uh, let's say, the, the face of the next uh, of the Trada Biennale? Uh, thank you, Albert. We are. Um... Uh, still in the middle of the uh, Biennale, <laughs> third edition. We have a lot of visitors. We are very happy that we are uh, sharing our uh, old journey with our visitors. And uh, of course, we are very happy that now we have this space, which, is, which was very important for us, also for the youngsters to have a space when, where they can also uh, have workshops on production and education, in skills building, and also working close with the uh, artists with curators and other uh, experts uh, on production uh, so yes we are uh, we are all the time um, speaking and reflecting together with curators for a uh, next edition and uh, maybe yeah uh, I can uh, I can I can say that uh, for the first time I mean publicly <laughs> yeah, for it's the first that time also yeah. on the uh, fourth edition we want to continue with Joanna and Evil because of the uh, some of the discussion and also some of the work that are still also on research phase so it's we ongoing. want to ongoing and we want to continue for extending them and also making deep research uh, on these works that we uh, already started but we want to to continue with some of them uh, thank you thank you so much <laughs> for the presentation tonight and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Come to Prisran, guys. We wait, we wait for you here. Please like see the works in purpose. And like uh, now Prisran has a very beautiful, lively <laughs> energy. It's full. It's uh, it's hot and it's alive. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we look forward to September. Yeah, we yeah, are open, we look so. forward um, to greet you um uh, in in our spaces. Uh, uh, apart from Monday, our spaces uh, are open from uh, 12 to 6. And for any large visits that you desire, we would be very like our team, as you see here, they are uh, extremely hospitable uh, and happy to also introduce the work that we had done together uh, to, um, to other enjoying conversation partners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>